Hey, Scott, do you want a coffee? Sure. Cool. Wait, what are you doing? You know, just some frozen coffee pods. Mm-hmm. So today, um, I've taken a step into the future. And by the future, what I really mean is these supposedly futuristic coffee capsules, like Cometer. Now, you might pronounce it Cometer, Cometer, I don't really know. What I do know is that about a year ago, one of my weird coffee friends in San Francisco told me that they got some frozen instant coffee and I should come try it. And you can probably guess what my response to that was. I'm not interested. About a month later, I found out about them independently and thought, damn, I missed my opportunity. I should have went and tried that frozen weird coffee. And then later still, a good friend of mine went uh, to be one of the lead coffee QA people at Cometer. Um, since then, I've been really interested in trying uh, Cometeer. And by the way, I'm going to say it differently every single time. Um, since then, I've been really interested in trying it, and I haven't had a chance yet. But today, finally, I do have a few of these capsules. So um, this is going to be the first tasting of Cometeer. Um, I've got two here. They're both part of their sort of like single origin line. The first one is from Bird Rock Coffee Roasters which is a San Diego coffee roaster that I really love. I've been there in person. I've ordered their coffee before. It's really fantastic. Um, I've had at least two coffees from them. Both were among my favorite coffees ever. The second is from Go Get Em Tiger. Now, Go Get Em Tiger is another coffee roaster that I really like. This one's based out of LA. And every time I go, uh, go to LA, this is in my itinerary from basically the first moment I started thinking about the trip. That being said, I already know that I like both of these coffee roasters. And anytime I've had a coffee from them, whether it's in person or brewed myself, it's been fantastic. So let's see how it holds up to this weird coffee style. So a little bit about Cometeer. And I'm not an expert, but my understanding is that they prepare the coffee to be brewed in such a way that it's currently frozen or very nearly frozen. And then I'm just going to apply hot water. That's what they mean by instant in the sense of just like normal instant coffee, like you would enjoy from Nestle or other you know, avenues, you just add water. So here I am with my cupping bowl and my cupping spoon, um, how most people enjoy their instant coffees. Let's go. What I'm gonna do is I've already warmed up the casing a teeny bit to make it easier to get out. I heard that trick from my friend. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this pre-brewed coffee that has been frozen in their proprietary technique and I'm gonna empty it into this little cupping bowl. Now, I'm gonna take 170 grams of water that's been preheated about 203. I'm gonna pour it over top. Now, I don't know if there's a particular agitation recommendation or anything like that. Um, I'm just going to assume not and keep on pouring. Perfect. 168.9, as I said before. Now, I'm going to stir. I don't know if you're supposed to stir, but I'm going to do it either way. I also don't know the temperature that this is going to be after brewing. Taking something very, very cold and adding my approximately 203 degree. But it's been completely integrated. There's no frozen chunks or anything like that. So let's see. I'd like to take a moment to reflect on my Onyx cupping spoon. Beautiful cupping spoon. All right, 
It's definitely got really nice flavors. The aroma is a bit on the weak side, um, which I think I definitely anticipated. And so I might be a bit biased there, but it's not got zero aroma. It has some. And when slurping, I get some really nice notes. The sweetness is excellent. Really impressed by the sweetness of this coffee. Um, I think in part due to just the fantastic brew, or sorry, the fantastic um, uh, beans and probably how they've been roasted. Um, I do anticipate that when they brew these before freezing, they are really thinking carefully about the notes that they want to highlight. <clears throat> the body is predictably thin. I think that is the two things I was most expecting out of this coffee are a thin body and very light aroma, both of which I'm finding to be the case. What I was most interested in finding out is how the flavors come out. So in this particular coffee, I am getting a great sweetness. And it doesn't say on the container. Oh, yes, it does say on the container. This is the Finca El Fadon. Other observations, um, light acidity, um, but a very nice, pleasant acidity. Um, one thing that should be mentioned, I believe that these are designed to be drank as sort of a cup of coffee, not necessarily cupped. And so the sort of texture and even flavor profile that you expect in a cupping is not really appropriate here, which means that slurping is not necessarily the ideal process for consuming the coffee. To that end, I'll go ahead and give it a more proper chug. Um, the temperature of the coffee, only a minute and a half or two out of brewing, it's quite nice. Um, it's very like ready to drink. Um, and I see why, if your goals are to have a quick, delicious cup of coffee, I think that this checks all those boxes. It's hard for me to imagine wanting something convenient and delicious and not finding this sort of meeting those marks. If your key goals include things like, you know, uh, an experience with your coffee or playing into your like ritual. I think those are the aspects that I'm not getting out of this. One thing that I think is a useful comparison is how would I feel in a cafe getting this ca coffee? I think I'd feel a bit disappointed. Um, it's certainly not in the regime of like coffee I'm not excited about, but it is definitely below the level that I expect from a third wave coffee shop. Let me go and heat up this kettle again so I can brew the second one. All right, so we're ready for the second one. This one, I'm going to brew at a slightly more aggressive ratio. I'm going to put 150 grams of water over top of this coffee. Um, one important difference, this is in Ethiopia, and we're going to be seeing sort of like the difference, and we're going to really try to address that thinness by reducing the amount of water to coffee ratio. Uh, let's find out. So, I'm excited to try this coffee from Go Get Em Tiger. Once again, they make great coffee. They roast fantastic beans, and generally I've always been really impressed by Go Get Em Tiger. Let's see if there's a difference in how it brews up. Not a perfect A to A, but we'll give it a try. quite different experience. Um, I can't say that the ratio is necessarily the major factor, but the coffee is quite different. Um, I do like African coffees a lot, and so like that's going to be a factor no matter what, but the acidity is really great here. I'm super impressed with the acidity. Um, I think comparable aroma. Still, still not a strong aroma, and in fact, in both of these brews, the aroma 
it's got an extra note that I don't experience with coffee very much. And I wonder if it has something to do with the process. Um, obviously, that would be a claim that I'd have to sort of evaluate carefully to tell if I could really smell their process. But I don't know. I'm getting some some interesting aroma, aromatic notes. <laughs> nice coffee. Um, sweetness is not as strong. The acidity is better. Um, all in all, I like this coffee better. The body, it, it does seem a little bit better. It's really hard to say that with a certainty. And of course, it's unclear if it's due to the ratio or just a different coffee. All in all, nice. It's a nice cup. And actually, one of the things that it reminds me is that I shouldn't be comparing this to just a pour over coffee. You might say, Brian, like, what's what's a really great cup of coffee? And for me, most days, that's a pour over coffee or an espresso. Um, but sometimes I found myself using pre-ground coffee. Now, I am really happy with my grinder. And when I can use my grinder, I do. Previously, I, I have also used a nice hand grinder, and I've been super happy with that. But there are times where you don't always have that access or convenience. My personal favorite way to deal with that problem is the discontinued product, which is <laughs> Blue Bottle Perfectly Ground. Now, this is a different thing than what Comatier is doing. Blue Bottle is perfectly ground is really fantastic. It made phenomenal coffee. I once, and several times since, brewed it in the back country with absolutely no resources out of a jet boil and had some of the best coffee of my life. Not to undermine the sort of significance of drinking excellent coffee in the back country always tastes better. However, this is still a different product. Why? Because when you brew perfectly ground, you brew it in one of the sort of fancy brewing methods. You brew it as a pour over, or in my favorite way, as a French press. And that's something I really want to call out. You are brewing pre-ground coffee. Now this happens to be created in such a way to make it shelf stable and fresh for a really long time, but that's a different thing. Now what about other things? There's sort of this type of thing, which is like a steeping coffee bag. This particular one happens to be from Mad Priest, but this company, Steeped Coffee, they work with a variety of roasters. Um, these are okay. Um, I, I really like Mad Priest. I'm a huge fan of the coffee they roast and the way they roast it and their company in general. For my money, though, I'm not such a big fan of this brewing style. I've not had great luck with it. Um, there's even more things out there. This little buddy is an interesting experiment. We'll just say that. <laughs> um, but actually none of these are equivalent to what Comatier is doing. One thing that you might have noticed when I was bumbling around over here with these devices is the shape. Um, in addition to being cylindrical, um, it's got a very particular form factor. That form factor is recognizable to you, it may be because it is a K-cup. Now, whether or not these are intended to be sort of like the fancy boy's K-cup, I can't say. But what I can say is that was intentional. They created these to be compatible with the K-cup machine. My mom, who I purchased a blue bottle subscription for and who, you know, just accumulated bags of beans, it might be much more excited about something like Comatier than she was about those really fantastic freshly roasted coffee beans. If this was your K-cup experience in the morning, you'd be probably having a revolution for the first month. Um, because I think it's clear to say that this is a whole nother experience than what you get out of a K-cup. Um, I think when you put it on the scale, something like an espresso pod, we're even in another APOC out, um, really in a completely different world. There's other things. There's things like the Via. The Via is, I think, Starbucks 
uh, attempt at sort of instant coffee, maybe to compete with um, uh, Nestle's, uh, I forget what they're called, but like dehydrated coffee. And I think while some of those products can be really convenient and can even be like really enjoyable in the right setting, if this is what Cometeer is going up against, I they're not even in the same world. For me, I'm probably not going to wake up in the morning very often and think, man, I really want some Cometeer. But when I travel, I mean, I could see this being a pretty cool opportunity is to have sort of like really delicious instant coffee. So if I wanted to travel with this, one thing that comes to mind is the fact that like, I probably can't keep it frozen. Supposedly it's okay for three days after it melts. Um, I haven't tried that, but it's actually really interesting. I'm kind of now curious to try it melted and see how different it tastes. One way or another, um, I think all in all, good coffee. I think I'm very, very interested in sort of drinking coffee like this. And I can't say that this is a disappointment in really any dimension. Um, it's really hard to commit, like to compete with freshly ground beans from really high quality roasters at exactly their peak freshness level. I didn't expect it to compete with that, but the things that it's most comparable to, it blows out of the water or, you know, I guess blows into the water <laughs> one way or another. Um, impressed and yeah i'm certainly going to enjoy the rest of the package that i ordered because today's episode so strongly featured one product i wanted to make sure i mentioned that like all of my content this was neither sponsored nor produced in conjunction with the company all of my content is produced because i'm interested Cometeer hasn't had a chance to see what I said and will not get to see this video before anyone else. On the other hand, I will be making a donation to Save the Children and specifically their efforts in Central America. Some of the coffees that I drank in this episode were from Central America, and so I wanted to give a little bit of money back. And to that, I say cheers. Oh. Don't do that.